What's up guys, this video is going to be relatively informal, we're going to be tying a couple marabou jigs and I'm going to just sit here in front of the vise, show you guys step by step how I tie what I would consider a perfect marabou jig. Hope you guys enjoy this video, it's a little bit different than my standard bait making which I do back here behind me, but this is basically the full breakdown and rundown on how I tied this little marabou jig. One of the videos that I get asked for probably the most is a marabou hair jig tying video. So what I want to do in today's video is really give you guys a breakdown or, or just kind of walk you through what I do when I tie a hair jig. So the very first thing I do is lay down a little bit of fly tying cement or fly glue, whatever you might want to call it, and then I just lay myself down a nice little base. This is a custom head I've poured. Uh, it's a Midwest finesse head, and then I pour it with a really long bait keeper. I believe it's a WB800, um, which is a longer bait keeper. I like this because then I actually have a bait keeper when I slide my max scent flatworm or max scent up onto the shank of the hook underneath the hair. Um, I like to have that bait keeper on there. The one that I'm going to be tying today is going to be a brown color, a tannish style color. This is a color that I played with a little bit, but I lay myself down a base, kind of wrap over this tail thread, wrap back down a little bit so I have something to tie to, and then I clip off that little bit that's hanging out there at the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I typically take my feather. Um, this is a feather I've already used, but I'm going to strip off probably the top inch, inch and a half of feather that typically is bad, and I'm going to work my way down the feather. And I like to personally just pull it right off of the feather itself. You get a little bit of that white end stem of the feather in there. I like that because what it does is it helps that feather stay tied to the hook. So I'm going to lay it on the bait and tie a little strand on. And I'll go back three or four wraps um, and grab another piece of marabou. That's what I like to do during the winter. They're, they're not a fast bait to tie by any means. It saves you a ton of money when you're paying, you know, $10 per hair jig or $10 per two hair jigs. Uh, this is a way to save a lot of money and it keeps you busy when it's real cold. If you guys see me touch the camera or kind of look away or slow down for a little bit, it's because I'm trying to refocus on the, the jig for you guys. But as you can see on this one, there's a little bit more stem in there. Like I mentioned, that just holds the bait or holds the hair onto the bait um, just a little bit more effectively. Gives you a couple extra fish out of your hair jig. But they catch so many fish, I guess that's that's a trade-off, and I'm saving so much money that I don't really complain. Now this is what I meant. When I say I pick off probably the first couple of inches of that feather, you get a little bit of this clumpy feather. You don't want that. You want only the most flowy sections of the feather to tie onto there. I like to tie my own too because you really get to pick and be ultra selective about the feathers that you use. So I like these really long flowy ones. I want them to be longer, about an inch longer than the end of my hook shank. And that's gonna give your bait the most flow, which I think is really important when you're tying a marabou jig. So this one I got quite a bit of that stem in there. If I get a lot of the stem like that, I'll trim a little bit of that back. It just makes it hard to work with. And another thing that I'm gonna do is fold that over and just kind of soften it up a little bit. You'll get that hard stem piece in there. I like to fold it over, soften it up. One thing I'll do is typically do about three feathers, or three pieces of feather with my jig hook pointing down. And then after this one, what I'm going to do is take and flip my jig. What this makes sure that I do is it helps me really get my jig full all the way around. I don't want to end up with any sections that are more full or less full than others. So I'm going to check throughout, kind of checking to make sure that I'm keeping the jig balanced and keeping it even because that's what's going to allow that jig to track really, really straight um, but also look the most natural in the water. So then I'm going to do a section here. Don't be worried. If you guys tie up a little bit of feather in there, by the end of this thing you're going to have so much feather on there, um, you don't really have to worry about it. Your goal, you can make it as bushy or as, as thin as you like. I typically like mine relatively bushy so I don't get too caught up and if I tie up a little bit of feather, I'm just going to make up for it. Now when I'm tying up a hair jig, I'm typically going through about three to four decent sized feathers. Um, if you go with like a Joann fabric size bag of feather where 
the feathers are a little bit smaller, you might go through more, you might go through less. It just really depends on the size of the feather, um, the quality of feather that you're using. Feathers that I'm using right now are this Select Hairline Feather. It's pretty good. It's very expensive compared to like your craft feather that you might get from the craft store, which is personally, honestly, my favorite. I like to go as inexpensive as possible while still getting really quality product. And what I'm talking about when I talk craft feather is this Zucker feather. Find this at your Joanne Fabrics, your Marshalls, or excuse me, your Michaels, any place that sells like Crafts Hobby Lobby. I'll swing in there and see if they have any of these feathers because they come in a lot bigger bag. You just have to throw quite a bit more of them away. They're not super select. And so to get like the long flowy sections, you're not going to get quite as many good feathers. You can really pick through it and be selective about what you do tie into your jigs. I'm going to talk through this. I don't quite tie quite as well. If you guys want to see a phenomenal tire, someone that is like an artist at the craft, go check out Smalljaw. He's the one that I originally started watching when I was tying, and then I developed a little bit of my own style just through watching other guys and seeing how other guys do it. But Smalljaw is really, really phenomenal at everything tying. He ties literally everything, so Smalljaw is the dude. Obviously, I do mostly jig making, bait making on this channel, but this is a little bit different style of content for you guys that keeps me busy through the winter. What I like to do is once I get a decent bit on, once I've done the top and once I've done the bottom, I'll just get to give it a quick blow to see where I'm soft on feather. You guys can tell right here I'm a little bit soft, right here I'm a little bit soft, and just generally on the top I'm a little bit soft. But I'm going to flip the feather, flip the jig, go back to the bottom section again. I like to do this probably once or twice, twice on each side. And then that's typically when I'll feel that I'm satisfied with how my jig looks and I'll be done. Typically about three and a half to four feathers. I'm just picking off the bad section of feather. When I'm really tying and I'm focused, I can probably get one done every ten-ish minutes. They're not a quick bait to tie. It's not like while you're tying a jig. It's not like even hand tying a jig. This is something that to me takes a little bit more precision. Um, because when you get a really good hair jig, it has really nice flow in the water, tracks super straight, and that to me makes all the difference between getting bit and not getting bit. So these are things that I take quite a bit of time and precision on when I'm tying, as opposed to maybe you know a jig where I just slap some skirt material on and tie it into a jig head. This is where I'm going to start to build up to the jig head. I am using that Midwest Finesse head. With this Midwest Finesse head, you're going to have a little bit of a gap between the head and your thread. I don't necessarily mind that. They do make a worm nose jig mold, which uh, does allow you to have a specific area to tie on, a lead area to tie on instead of tying to the hook. But to me, it just, this is what I've used. I've had a lot of success and confidence in catching a lot of big fish on this bait. And so to me, this is, this is, what I like to use to tie. Now, if you guys look on the bottom, that's pretty much perfect. It looks very even throughout this side of the jig, and so I'm pretty satisfied with the bottom of the hair jig. Now, we'll take another look after we finish up the top section, but for now, I think that bottom section is looking pretty good, and this is gonna be our fourth feather right here. Now, I used a bunch of partial feathers. If you get a feather like this, where you have just a little bit of flowy section, this is no good. Like, if it's clumpy at all, I'm not saving this feather. There's a little section on this side that looks good. Maybe a little section down here where it's super long that looks good. So out of this feather, here's the top of the feather. I lost about half of that feather just to bad section. But then look how nice and long this section is. This is a super long piece. If I get a really long section too, I like to tie it in right in the middle on both sides. So I'll like intentionally try to find a long piece for the top and a long piece for the bottom. That way it stays pretty balanced. The key to a hair jig, a key to a good hair jig, is to not only have it be flowy and long, but have it be balanced. If it's not balanced, um, believe it or not, that hair is going to cause that bait maybe not to track quite true. It's not going to look really natural in the water. So I like to try and make it as balanced as I possibly can. You guys are going to go down there in the comment section I'm sure tell me that marabou's not hair. I, I realize that. It's just what they've been called in bass fishing for at least the past couple seasons. So... That's just what I refer to them as. 
You just go and call them whatever you'd like. I think it's looking pretty good. When I get towards the end and I start to tie some feathers in there, I really don't like that because what happens is that's going to start to show up um, in the end result of the jig. You're going to start to see those pieces stick out the sides and the top. So be a little bit more careful as you start to get to the finishing end. A little bit soft. It looks a little bit soft like right here. So I'm going to tie one more on that far side away from me. Another thing, you can wet that marabou as you're tying. That's something I'll, I'll typically do. It will help kind of keep this hair condensed a little bit. And that's about a perfect hair jig. Like if you start to look at that, that's pretty close to perfect. Uh, you look at it from the front, it looks pretty good. There's the head, there's a the line tie. It's pretty much perfectly straight back, perfectly straight down the, down the bottom. And that is what I would consider pretty close to a perfect looking little marabou jig. I'm gonna build it up just a little bit when I'm doing these finishing wraps. But I'm okay with that. I actually have never noticed it caused the bait to run funny or cause any issues. So I'm kind of okay with there being a little bit of a gap between there. If you want that really precise, you can fill it in with thread. Um, but to me, that's fine. So now what I'm going to do is take some thread, wrap it around my finger, spin it once or twice, and then... This is called whip finishing. I like to pull it tight. One thing you don't want to do is break this thread. So be really nice and gentle with it. Wrap it around your finger, spin it twice, go around the jig. These fly tying guys, they have what's called a whip finishing tool. And I'll do it three times. And I'm gonna sort of cinch it down. Like I said, I don't like to really cinch it. That's the chance that I end up breaking that thread and I don't like to take that chance. So now what I'll do and this is what I mean by wetting down my jig, is just wet my fingers slightly, wet that marabou just to hold it back, and the reason you're going to want to do that now is because when you go to glue, you don't want your glue getting all up in the hair or the marabou, um, because that's going to basically mat down your marabou, and you don't want that. So I get it a little bit moist, it wets down the hair feather, and I'm going to take my fly cement or super glue, just apply that onto the threads. You can use super glue, there's nothing wrong with that. I got this for very, very cheap at Frank's where I was working. So that's why I have this. It's also very precise. You can get really, really precise. And once I glue this knot, I'm gonna cut it off. I like to glue it first. It's gonna help hold it all together for me when I do cut off that little piece of thread. Take my scissors, I cut it pretty short. You don't have to like micro cut it. So when you glue it, it's gonna hold everything together nicely for you guys. And that is what I would consider a perfect or almost perfect marabou jig. So if you guys enjoyed that video of me tying this marabou jig, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to go down and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It's gonna be a lot more content coming, whether it's at the fly tying station or at the table behind me making some baits. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.